Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoy this real-time 16 by 20 original oil painting of a beautiful mountain landscape. And uh, this one, I had a little bit of my inspiration is from, from photos that I've been watching from uh, Wyoming. So please sit back, enjoy the video, and if you have any questions, concerns, or anything else, please leave a comment below. Thank you. Hello everyone. And welcome to another exciting oil painting video. Uh, the last uh, one we did was a little 6x8. And we're going back today to our 16x20 stretch canvas, just for the heck of it. And we are going to do a nice, beautiful painting together. So you go into Viridian and a little Lizard Crimson. We're going to go with those two today. Not going to do as much Payne's Gray for this. A lot of medium. So you got really nice and transparent. Remember, you don't want it dripping down. You just want it to flow real easy so you can kind of figure out what you're doing. Okay, I've been doing a lot of stuff looking around lately. My wife and I are thinking about when we retire. We're in the Chicago area, suburb of Chicago. And we're thinking when we retire, going to Wyoming. 600,000 people for the entire state. Mountains everywhere, Yosemite, the Grand Tetons, all that stuff. So I've been looking at a lot of that stuff, so I'm thinking about doing a big mountain scene today. So we get our horizon going here, and this will just give us an idea. I apologize for my voice, whatever the hell it is that I got. I feel good, I have no fever. You know, I coughed just a little bit, but not bad. But, you know, it's still not 100%, so whatever the hell it is I got, I got it pretty good. Anyways, <clears throat> let's go with the mountains. Now, one of the things I noticed about a lot of those mountains is they have what I call flat top okay so they're just a flat top and they come down like this you know they go all over the place and we're gonna put in the sky first before we get these going real good but this is just gonna give us an idea of what we're doing so we're just gonna see how the sketching is so easy just put another flat top there That's good for now. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm probably going to have a waterfall come down here, so I'm not really sure about this right now. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is usually I sketch out the whole thing like this. Because I've got something specific in mind today, which I usually don't. Let me make sure that's showing up good. Yeah, that looks good. But because, <coughs> excuse me, because I have something um, in mind, I'm going to go with it and just kind of start with the opaque and start with the sky and then kind of work my way down. Now, I got the mountains pretty high, so I'm going to have a little bit of a sky only, not much. But I'm probably going to bring these mountains further down than the um, horizon line. This is just to give me an idea of where I'm at. Um, I don't need to do that, but th I have these are beginning uh, beginner videos. So it's designed for people with intermediate or less experience, all the way up to the very beginner that just picks up a brush for the first time. So, rule of thumb. Get a horizon in. Doesn't matter how, doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter where you want it. You can have the horizon down here, you can have it up here, whatever you want. Use that as your base, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so using the same inch and a half brush. And I'm going to wipe it off, but I'm not going to wash it off. So it's got some green on it and all that other shit. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt blue, a little cerulean blue, just a touch of a lizard crimson. A little bit more lizard. There you go. Okay, now that's way too thick of paint for that little sky. I can't possibly put enough white on there to make it look good when you only have a little bit of a sky like that. So what we're going to do... We're going to make sure that the canvas is just stained with that color. So I wiped off the brush to get the thick paint off that I just put on. Take that same paper towel. And I'm just getting the thick stuff off. So now we've got a thin layer of cerulean blue, um, co cobalt blue, and a little bit of lizard and crimson. So now we'll make sure that the brush really wiped off well. Okay, get all the big stuff off. And then we're going to go straight titanium white. 
okay? And then we're gonna just go in. See how nice that looks? Straight titanium white. Let me do that across the whole thing. Now the thing is, you know, titanium white obviously is an opaque color, so you don't want it so opaque where you get rid of the red and everything else. You don't want that. But you also don't want to not blend with this pretty green that we put in here with the red and everything else. So that's why I'm skimming this here. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to bring this right to the mountains, but the mountains I'm going to adjust as I go so it'll look like the sky's behind it, which in all actuality it will be. Okay. I'm going to blend this up real nice. That's where my tweezers are. There we go. I'm going to take just a touch more alizarin. Put it here. And a little bit more of the cobalt. Put it underneath. Just a little bit more. I like the corners darker. It's not a necessity, but I prefer it that way. Wipe off my brush, step back, and take a look at this. Okay, I like that. Now I'm just going to blend this out a little bit. And use a medium pressure just to get all these colors blend together so it doesn't look like there's a solid start and stop. I want them to flow together. There we go. Now I'm going to wipe off the brush again. What I want to do... And I'm just going to put in a few clouds. I'm not going to go crazy with the clouds. This isn't a cloudscape. I just want a few in there. And where I got my nice little darks and some of my nice little reds and blues showing up, I'm not going to cover that. I'm just going to leave them kind of... There we go. Now, wipe off the brush. Again, not cleaning it, just wiping it off. And then we're going to do our normal... Barely touching it. Remember, you don't want to blend this white. You want to just move it around. Okay, so very light. Then we go back the other way. Okay, and now we just go straight back to get rid of those brush marks. There we go. You can see how I'm holding the brush. I'm barely putting any pressure. Just give it what it needs. There we go. Step back. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's a nice little sky. Okay, so. Uh, excuse me. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out our mountain. And we're going to figure out the mountain as it goes. So what I'm thinking about doing is making these go to the horizon around here. And this go down a little bit further and maybe over. That's kind of what's going through my mind. So, I'm going to go Lizard Crimson, Viridian, Ross Sienna, Payne's Gray. And the only reason I'm doing that is I just want a really dark mixture. It doesn't uh, matter what color it is, as long as it's very dark. I'm going to start here. I'm kind of reshaping the mountain as I go. I want a lot of up and down here. And I was looking at pictures of mountains in Wyoming and, you know, anybody that lives there or visited there, I've never been there. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like there's a lot of them that had that square top. And they're just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to bring this down. Now, it's going to be a little different how we do... Um, the highlight on it, but that'll be fine. There we go. There we go. 
Okay, I think that's gonna work for there. You know what I'm gonna do? Since I got these so dark, I'm gonna make this my fore, well not foreground, but midground. I'm gonna make these in front of these. I'm gonna have these fade back a little bit. So I'm gonna take my same mixture that I'm doing with this, but now I'm gonna add a little bit of white. I'm actually going to make this one that way, too. Now, in a minute, I'm going to bring these down more, and I'll show you what I mean. I want to just get this situated first. And these are not going to be highlighted. I'm going to blend it out. I'm going to make them relatively smooth. I might put some lights and darks in as something that's very subtle, but it's not going to be highlighted to where it's going to stand out highlight. I want to bring these into the sky. And then in a minute, I'm going to blend it right into the back of the sky. So now, the next thing I'm gonna do, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna blend it into the sky right now. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take just a little fan brush. Again, very gently, sort of like the pressure that we did for the uh, clouds. And basically I'm hitting the edge of the mountain into the sky at the same time, half and half. And that's going to blend the two together. So I got the first parts done. And that's going to make them sink back. This is going to have a definitive line, distinct hard edge. This is not. There we go. And that brush I can wipe uh, and actually clean off. Oh no, there's the bird again. You all know the bird. Rats to the bird. Uh, crazy bird. And he is crazy, actually. Okay. There's a lot of white in here. So we're going to put our highlights in as white. Because I told you, I want them faint. do just put them where I think the light would be hitting. And there's going to be a lot of stuff around here too. You notice how little bit I put on the brush and I haven't really loaded more white. As like I said, I want this to be faint. Check that out here. Oh yeah, I can deal with that. Okay, wipe the brush off. Again, wipe, not clean. That's gonna get a little bit. And the reason I do this, even if it's subtle, you're probably not gonna catch this on the video, but in person you do is this gives the highlight and the shadow its own distinct space. And it really shows up well. And it just, it molded into 3D, even though it's faint, and this is considerably darker. Now this is going to go into mountain here and then into foothills here. And I'm gonna kind of come right across like this. So this will definitely be behind. The only thing I'm going to do too then is before I put the highlights on this when I go here, I'm going to put a little bit of impressions, a little bit of pine trees, just so it looks like, because one thing I noticed about the mountains in Wyoming, most of those have some kind of pine tree lines, lines of pine trees I should say, even at their higher elevations. Now this particular one, I apologize for drinking again like last time. 
I gotta keep my throat moist. Okay, now this one I've been watching, um, not watching videos, but uh, looking at pictures, like I said, for the last week or so about Wyoming mountains. This range that I'm doing isn't a particular range. It's kind of like my own interpretation of it. And one of the things that you should know by now from watching my videos, by the way, 516 subscribers, you people are freaking awesome. Thank you very much. And ladies, you're awesome. At one time, you were less than 10% of my subscribers, or my viewers, I should say. Now you're over like 38%. You women rock. Thank you very much. And to all the 18 to 25 year olds that started watching my videos, Thank you very much. Put in the comments if you like it, don't like it, you want to see something different, let me know. But anyways, before I got into that rant, but I do appreciate your viewing and, and uh, subscribing. Um, I don't like to take something and copy it. I love that artistic license. So what I did was I'm taking the general seal that I got from the Wyoming mountains and I'm kind of creating my own mountain range. Now, does that mean I'll never take a picture of a mountain in Yellowstone and trying to make it look pretty much like it. Not an exact copy, but close. Yeah, I probably will at some time, especially if, you know, my wife and I end up going on vacation there next year, like we're thinking about. But for the most part, I want to take the feel of what it is that I look, when I look at uh, Wyoming and the mountainscapes and kind of interpret it into my own thing. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, go back to our dirty ass brush. And this thing is, it's screaming, it's so dirty. Now we're gonna go back into the dark, dark, okay? We went lighter here, now we're gonna go dark, dark. So, these I got my little flat tops and then a little whatever. This I'm gonna make a little bit more. Let me see how I'm gonna do this. I want it to come on this line. So I'm gonna go like this. And again, this is Elysian Crimson, Ross Sienna, Viridian Green, and Payne's Gray. This would be just like foothills. And they're gonna have some stuff around them and everything else, so they're not gonna be that precise. This is just giving me an idea of where the hell I'm going. See that change quickly. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm gonna make this a ravine. And now I'm just making it up as I go. I had something in mind, that part is done. Now the rest of this shit I'm just making up. So this one I'm gonna have what I'm going to do down here. I might take it all the way to the bottom. I might not. I don't know. But I'm going to have a waterfall coming out of it here. And the water is going to come like this. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the rest. We'll see. We'll see how it works. Okay. This is what I want to try and teach anybody that's willing to listen. It doesn't matter what you have for photo reference. It doesn't matter what you have anywhere else. It doesn't matter what you see in a movie, a YouTube video. None of that shit matters. What matters when you're painting, in my opinion, is what is in your heart and what you feel like as far as I'm feeling my way through this painting. No, my feelings today shouldn't be, you know, I'm feeling blue, so everybody should feel sorry for me. No, that's not the feelings I'm talking about. I'm talking about feeling my way through the work, okay? I started with above here, that was kind of in my head. Everything else, the second half of the painting, I, at this moment, I have no idea. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep this, but I wanna give it a shot to see where I'm going. So, actually, I just changed my mind. My waterfall's gonna be over here. Yeah, I gotta balance the painting. So it's just gonna come right out of the, yeah, it's gonna come right out there. Yeah, 
yeah, that's going to work. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and it just came to me as I was yakking away. Okay, so one of the things I always like is balancing painting, okay? And what I mean by balancing, there's a lot of ways you can balance a painting. But in this particular instance, I'm talking about the elements, okay? So here we have a heavy element. We have a mountain that's in the mid and foreground now, okay? Over here we have distant mountains and just little foothills. So we need something here of weight for um, for an element to compositionally balance it. So now we've got heavy here. Once I put the waterfall in over here with this, it'll balance it. I'll have some pines over here and only some little ones over here. So again, it kind of balances it. I know it sounds a little weird and I apologize for that. However, you'll see as the painting develops, this is all gonna be grass now, pasture. Okay, there's gonna be little pine trees and all that other stuff. The water's gonna come through here. And it's gonna come up to here and down to here, so I think. Let me put this up here. I'll see how the perspective works. But right now I'm gonna go back into my medium, which I haven't used in a while. I'm gonna go into cobalt, blue, and cerulean blue. Excuse me, let's see how this is gonna work. Now, one of the things I noticed, and I, and I unintentionally lied to, you, lied to you, I have been to Wyoming once, however, going from Chicago to Glacier National Park, which is where I went with my brother many years ago, before I met my wife even, um, we clipped the, what is that, northeast corner of Wyoming before we went up into Billings and then around through Butte uh, and um, everywhere up to West Glacier. So we kind of did that. So I did clip, you know, this little corner of it. But as far as seeing anything of value in Wyoming, we were in and out of it at a blink of an eye. So technically I've been there, but now what this is gonna show, and I want it to show, Gotta see how I'm doing this. So this might be pasture too. We're running into a mountain, so I gotta see where I'm gonna go into here. Water's not gonna go through the mountain. Actually, maybe it will. Water's gonna be shooting out of there. Okay, so. Making that mountain a little shorter make this perspective work. Another thing I did notice, even when I was in Montana, and I'm guessing since Wyoming and Montana are pretty close together, there's a lot of blue water there. See how I'm just putting this together like a little puzzle? Okay, so this is gonna be grass. And it's gonna come down to there. Okay, now I got an idea what I want. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with my Viridian and raw sienna. And I'm gonna put in my land. little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go with the dark again. I got to even this out so it looks like the land and the mountain are working together.
Here we go. Right now, it doesn't look all that good, and it's not going to for a little bit. But it will. direction now that I got the water established and I got the land around it established. There we go. Oh yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Okay, so this over here is going to be faint pasture, okay? It's just going to be a pasture. And I'm going to have a highlight less on here than I am on here. So I'm going to have it to this is illusion is that's going to be going back. So in theory, if this works out correctly, this is going to be back, middle, front for mountain ranges for this makeshift Wyoming mountain range, okay? So while I'm doing this, I might as well just finish up land... And I'm going to go Viridian and um, Raw Sienna. I'll just get rid of the rest of the white of this canvas. Now, one of the things that I just meant, thought of uh, when I mentioned white of canvas is something that we were doing together last time. And I had a, um, and I worked on a 6x8 panel and I had it already um, toned with Rossi and uh, Bird Sienna. And I told you I never really do that, and I've seen a lot of people on YouTube, artists that swear by it, so I was gonna try it. I didn't find a huge benefit to it. Maybe because I've been painting on white canvases for so long. Um, I'm gonna keep trying, especially on the panels. I may try it on a big 16 by 20 one of these days, I don't know. But it wasn't anything that was, oh my goodness, I don't know what I've been missing all this time. Other people swear by it, I was like, eh, it's okay. Okay, so I gotta do for perspective, gotta get this just a little bit more land here. Okay, so what I did just to do that, I don't know if you can see it that well. You should be able to. I got my water here. So it's a little narrow here. And then you had this part, which can be a little bit of a waterfall. Maybe not a waterfall, but a little bit of rapids. And then it widens up. And that's perspective. Start small and then widen up as you go from any direction, okay? Wherever it starts is where it's going to be the narrowest. Even go like a street, you know, do one of these. So I've like, you know, the old perspective books, you know, you stand in the middle of the street and you look down if it's relatively straight. And at one time, when you your furthest sight back, which is your horizon line, it's going to show that the side on the right and left converge. Technically, they don't, and you know they don't, but the perspective says they do. Perspective is the same thing in here, too. Okay, so. These are rocks, too, by the way. They will be, once I put the knife to it. Once I put the knife to it. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. Now I need another drink. <coughs> I messed up my throat. There we go. Okay, I love this. And I have no idea what the hell it's going to do. But I do like it. Okay, so. I'm going to do here. I'm going to start with the pasture. I want to get that done. And then I'm going to highlight the mountains. That one's already done. This is going to be faint like that. And then this is going to be a little darker. So I'm going to use a brush to highlight that. And then everything else I'm probably going to use a knife. And then they'll be a little thicker when I put them on. So I'm just gonna put some now lemon yellow into the back and I'm gonna tap it in to get rid of the yellow and just make it green. And we're gonna have a lot, once the highlights are in, I'm gonna put some trees and different shrubs and stuff starting from here. And stuff going up the mountain so it'll look got stuff to it. 
I don't want any yellow patches because that constitutes a really dramatic highlight and I don't want dramatic right now in this area. Matter of fact, the trees I put in here are gonna be dark. And I'm gonna have stuff up here so that'll cover that. big heads in the way. I apologize, but I hate you over there to see that. Okay, so now we've got everything situated. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start highlighting the back stuff over there. Same brush I used to highlight up here. I'm not even going to wipe it off. little bit of raw sienna in there. It was looking too much like the one behind it. Get some more raw sienna. Looking too much like the stuff behind it and uh, it wouldn't contrast well. A lot of that's going to be covered when I put the trees on too, but I want to have something that shows up because I'm going to have a shit ton of trees going through it, but I still want to have a little bit of highlight showing through where the tree isn't. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the difference. Like I said, over here, I'm not gonna worry about. One, it's probably gonna be in shadow anyway, depending on how this goes. And the other thing is I'm gonna have trees going up in here. I was gonna put them behind here, but I'm not, I'm gonna put them in front. Cause I'm only gonna go about that high. I don't wanna get rid of this back. I love the way those back distant mountains look. So I'm probably gonna go, like I said, maybe to this level. So you still have that in the back. Maybe a couple of them here and there that go up into it, but I wanna leave 70% of them. I want at least 70% of this. I think that looks really good. Okay, so. We're moving right along here. It's funny too because that little 6x8 took only about 10 minutes, maybe 12 minutes, I think, somewhere in that area. Um, less than a big 16x20. That's because you still gotta take care of it. You gotta still be careful. You gotta take care of it. You gotta see what you're doing. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna have trees or something that's gonna go up into here like they normally would be in, um, in real life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take white with this dark and I'm just gonna slide down with the knife. I'm gonna see how that looks. Put my finger in yellow. Any good? Let's see how that goes. Yeah, just like that.
right now I'm just kind of um, sculpting the top just so they look reasonably well. I'm probably gonna hit it with a fan brush and tap them in. The other thing this is going to be doing too is just giving me a light surface. To put. Let me see how that looks. Okay, I can deal with that. It's going to give me a light surface now in areas to tap in my um, to tap in my pine trees. pretty good. Now I gotta sculpt this again here. I gotta put some ground. That works. Okay, that works. Oh, I apologize for the silence here and there. Actually, it's probably good for you guys to give your ears a break for me yapping constantly. But I just wanted to, I don't know, when I got that little precision stuff, I gotta really concentrate on what the heck I'm doing. Okay, now what I'm doing here is cleaning up the top edges. They're jagged and stuff, but not in a way that are mountains. It's got a little frizzy stuff. So I'm just gonna take Gonna tap. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Just want to smooth it out a little bit. This may seem a little anal to do, but I want the top since it's going to be visible I'm not going to have foliage going all the way up I want the top I have a little bit of rhyme and reason to it I'm also blending a little bit of this Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so, see how this looks. Oh yeah, I'm liking that a lot. I'm liking that a lot. Okay, so the next thing is, um, I wanna finish the mid-ground, and that's gonna be a shit ton of pine trees. 
And how do we do pine trees? We're gonna start with a base of Viridian and Payne's Gray. Maybe a little Alizarin Crimson, but for sure the Viridian Payne's Gray. We're gonna get that dark base down. And then we'll hit it with the lemon yellow and then blend it in to get a pretty green. And remember, we're not gonna go over the mountains other than this little foothill. And that's not gonna be completely, we're not gonna blow it all out. So we'll get all that done first. And then we'll do the water and then this last part here, and then we will call that a day. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the same dirty brush that I still haven't cleaned. I'm glad my bird, my wife's bird, approves. Okay, let's start over here. Remember, you got a real thick paint here. So I want to get it all on the top of the waterfall here because I'm going to have the water coming out. And I don't want any. I don't, I don't want the viewer to know exactly where that water came from. It's my little secret mainly because I have no idea where it came from either. And then the rest of this is just what you want. You know, when I hit it with the yellow, okay, it's gonna make more sense because with the, when I hit it with the yellow, it'll show up better. Right now, I'm the only one that can see. You can't see this on the video. Once I hit it with the yellow, the lemon yellow, then you'll be able to see it exactly. And now, because I got a lot of other stuff, I'm just gonna go straight paint spray. But when I hit it with the lemon yellow, It'll come up as a nice green. And like I said, the trick is when you're going in this part of the painting now, you want to be thick. Pretty good there. Now I'm gonna go there we go. Let me see how that looks. Oh that's looking really good. I'm gonna leave this alone here. Okay so next thing we do wipe off the brush. Again you don't have to clean it. We're putting on the same colors. We don't want them in your face. That's why we're not going to keep them yellow. It'll look like it in the very beginning when I put them on. But as I tap into that thick color, it's going to turn into green, obviously. Okay. Um, so we're not going to have that real thick yellow. I don't want, you know, highlights that bright. So I'm going to go lighter there. So I'm going to start here with the real thicker stuff. And over here, because it's so thick, and then we got the mountains over there, I'm loading the brush after every tree I'm using. Just, I, I just want it thick. It's funny too, because I don't know how much experience you've got. But one of the things that really I don't want to say freaked me out, but was very difficult for me to understand was thick oil paint is good. It was meant to be that way, okay? That's the way oil paint was meant to be painted with. Real thick, broad strokes, whatever the case may be. 
and I was so apprehensive about that in the beginning. Okay, so now, see how thick I got that? Now that predominantly yellow. It's not going to be that way. I'm going to take a little fan brush and I'm just going to make little things in it this way and this way and then I'm going to do it. Now here, that was one load of the brush per tree. Now I'm going to use one load of the brush for as many as I can. Because as it's going to the right, I want it to get lighter progressively. Then I'm just going to put a couple little things. And I'm going to blend those in. So, what did we learn just now? <clears throat> and you'll learn it here real quick in a second if you're not, if you don't know where I'm going with this. I kind of just, I don't want to say threw the paint on, but I just kind of globbed it on over here where I wanted it thicker even though it's not gonna stay that way. And then as I wanted it a little more to the distance, cause look at everything the way we've got it set up here. These mountains are more front, these trees are more in front. Get here, it's middle, there it's furthest away. Obviously over here it's gonna be more. Hell, the flower that I put in, I may use a palette knife to really make them jump. So we're gonna take a little fan brush. Over here, we're gonna just tap in a little bit here. going to tap a lot over here. This I am. See how that glob of yellow now turns into just a little brighter green? I'm going to do this. See, I've got the yellow is gone now. going right where I had trees and where I don't to put in little ones. I'm going to hit this with some Payne's Gray here shortly. And some of these more pronounced ones, I'm going to do this. So just giving it a little bit of Basically, I'm just trying to fill this in now with branches. Okay, now. Right now, what I'm doing is fiddling with it to my taste. Now I'm going to take some Payne's Gray. I'm going to just darken some areas. over here. There we 
go. See how these pine trees now are coming to life? Now you do an individual pine tree. Okay. Christmas tree, whatever you want to call it. And you do it totally different. But I got a clump here that I wanted to show. I wanted this to be a dense forest. Over there, not as much. There's the kind of stuff. See, I like that. And the only thing I gotta do, take my brush and I gotta actually wash the brush. Take a little bit of white, just go over my highlights here. There we go. Okay, we are ready for the waterfall. For that, we need a clean brush. So I want that white to be thick and then straight down. So I got a clean brush. Straight into titanium white. I think I'm going to use the fan brush to finish it. I don't have as much control. And that was starting to go a little out of control here. Because I told you I want to get that little bit of... Right here. Way too thick. Where's my knifey? This is where you gotta really be careful where you do want thick paint and where you don't want it. Okay. That's actually gonna be covered, anyways. Now let me try something here. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe the brush off. Okay. I barely have anything on here for paint. I'm just taking what's on there and wiping it. And in a minute, I'm gonna add some cobalt blue to it. I wanna get a little bit of movement in this water. from the back that works a little bit more movement here
again, this is just like the mountains and everything else. This is, I'm feeling my way through this. Okay, so now I gotta wipe this off real good. And then I gotta do the same way we did the clouds, except with the fan brush. Barely gonna put any pressure down. Just moving that paint. Oh yeah, I like that much better. Okay, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our dirty one and a half inch brush. And basically we're gonna use the same color, Viridian and Preen's Gris, that we use for the pine trees. <coughs> hmm. Now these are gonna go straight up. This is what's gonna have our flowers on them. Also, keep the water. It's gonna look like it's a higher berm. So I'm mixing the white here on the water. That's okay. I'm gonna add some more pan's gray in a little bit. And I'm almost out. done so instead of adding a whole new tube of color the red is a lizard so it's gonna be dark this off. If you excuse me for a minute. I gotta get out some more paper towels. I went through about eight of them already. I know I waste a lot probably, but I just like to make sure all my stuff is, you know. Yes, I preach thick paint and I believe in thick paint and thick paint makes it look the best and everything else, but you still have to regulate it. It can't be just nothing but thick paint. So every once in a while you gotta clean your stuff up enough to get it to be, you know, a nice cohesive thing here. And I'm gonna just lay in the land. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is the flowers on these leaves and stuff that I just put down. And then we will have a completed painting, my friends. Hope everybody enjoys these paintings. Keep coming back for more. God willing, I'll be doing this for another, when I'm 58 years old. So at least another 30 years, maybe more, God willing. By then, I might have more women than men following my channel. Look out, you never know. One of the things I'm going to do right here, leave that alone, wipe off the brush. I want to tap this in. Just like that. Not everywhere, just some of the places. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, we're done. doing here just making little grasses little pastures little whatever you put it down real thick then you just do this 
little upward strokes. Okay. Now we are going to take our 99 cent Hobby Lobby brush. I'm gonna put some flowers in here. I already got all this yellow down, so I'm gonna put that there. And then for the reeds, I'm gonna put yellow down. Should make it pretty orange. Put a little of this over here. I am washing this brush off a little bit. I'm not gonna make it perfect, just to get some of the bulk off. My voice is gonna last. Thank God, it made it. Oh yeah. I was originally thinking about using a palette knife for this, but as I was going, I wanted to make it a little bit more controlled. we go okay my friends i think we have a completed painting i hope everybody enjoy this and if you did consider subscribing to me 516 of you already did i appreciate it so i hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend and a great work week next week and i'll see you then